Hi, Saira. Is the sound a little bit better today? Uh, hi, Bilal. Good to see you. Uh, Umar, great to see you. Thank you, folks, for joining. Hi there. Um, just wondering if the sound is a little bit better. Can those of you who can hear me? Hi, Hassan. Really nice to see you better now. Okay, good. So, some connection issue, I guess. Um, I'm not sure why the it's good now. Okay, Auntie Chine, thank you so much. Baneen, good to see you. Assalamualaikum. Is the sound okay? Can you guys all hear me now? I'm just waiting for Jean. You need to reconnect so that I can see you. And uh, sound is good. Okay, fantastic. Uh, great, great, Saira. I'm glad the sound is good. Let me just see if Jean is still here, or if I've lost her completely. I've lost her for now. Um, excellent, she's here. Okay. Hi. Hi. Sound any, sound any better? Now? The picture, your picture. You're breaking up. You're still breaking up. It's a click, is what it is. It's a clicking sound. Maybe clear up. I haven't changed. I've just reconnected. So if the internet has won't give us a clear signal, not yeah. much. I can. It, it makes it more. But there's a clicking sound on your side. What's that? There's a clicking sound, static clicking sound from your side coming my way. Oh, I'm hearing it from your side coming my way. It's, it's on, it's in those both ways. Maybe uh, turn, turn the comments off, somebody's saying. Uh, let me see. I'm not really sure how to. Uh, let me just see. Let me, your size will be shown here. Let me just see. There it's better. There will be better. So is that any better? I think I. Nope. Now when it clicked again. Still clicking again. There's no this better. So I guess. Uh, turn on questions. Any difference we should have. Uh, Banina, you still there? We've not been able to. So. Uh, can't listen properly. Rook is just the. Day. I guess. Everybody I'm not really sure what to do. So we wait like five minutes, 10 minutes or something, and then try? So I can hear you. Sometimes it just takes time for it. Uh, can hear you breaks when you speak oh. loud and clear as well. Um, well, go slowly. Talk slowly. OK. I can try. I don't know what my phone location is all funny. Mm. Just when you think you have it. Um, so you can see me but not hear me. Is that what everyone's generally saying? It breaks up when I speak. It breaks up when you're speaking. It breaks up. But I can get the gist of your question. So, you know, Jim, something else I want to do today. Um, I mean, do that what have gotten into potentially be material for could we be creating a curriculum? So I think um, you're talking about how we might create a curriculum together. Yes. Yes. And just to give us a grounding in the United States, there now is a discussion, not just at my university, but uh, online. Universities are either going in the direction of trying to figure out how to 
back to the way they were. Meanwhile, myself and a few other people are writing about and thinking about how everything has changed, not just at the universities, but everything is collapsing. And we've had pandemics in the past, or even in the United States, the financial breakdown in 2008. That was just financial. Now we have financial, educational, health, food supply system. So it's a much bigger collapse. And in terms of education and curriculum, that you and I have had and right now we're experiencing how we have to find a stronger channel but the possibility when national boundaries are no longer relevant in a global internet connected health connected virus uh, dragging us all into this disruption. So you and I have been talking about what kind of a curriculum it could be. And my, the basis of all my teaching, as long as I can remember, including yourself, has always been that the the ground of knowing, the ground of wisdom is your body in opposition to the idea that curriculum and education is a consumer product and the focus on the mind, or the brain as an organ above the body. So this is a very Western trace back to the French philosopher Descartes. I think, therefore, I am. That's all I need to know. Now, that's a distortion of his thinking. He, there is, it's, he's as complicated as any human being. But that's what broke loose and has ended up in an educational system that's theory-based, not in the body, totally unsustainable. So I think the collapse of that gives us an opportunity, gives us a real sudden breakthrough. And here we are dependent on the very disruption that there lies the connectivity that we all have, the breakdown of national boundaries, but the imposition and dominance of Western educational ideals. So I think the opportunity is there, but how we're going to maneuver it. Right now we're seeing there's a limitation on expectations, this clicking sound. I don't know. Now you're not even speaking, and I can hear the clicking. I'm, whether... I'm listening to you. Yeah. Well, I know. Oh, that's what the clicking is. Yes. <laughs> For listeners, every time he sends me, a message, I think, on Messenger. I hear this click, click, click that I never heard before. So I say, oh, he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, there are all these, these unexpected things. So curriculums have become in the United States, and I'm sure in many other places, consumer products, standardized, get your syllabus to look like everybody else's, Let's have an evaluation before the course even ends, just like a product evaluation. So there's such an opportunity. Here you are on the ground taking people to their heritage. And it's not, as you've said, it's, not a, a, it's now identified with a nation, with Pakistan. But the heritage goes much historically way back. So here you are also, and we didn't plan this, your ed 
edgy, edgy, cube edgy tours, edgy are, tours. tours are on the ground, starting with maps. Yes. And one of my, my, um, one of the things that I heard long ago from Greg Bateson, who is an extraordinary person. His homeland is England, but again, it's more the land. He said, the map, you have to remember, the map is not the territory. So by you're looking at the map, you're also showing people the historical way yeah. that that place was seen. And yes. then you go there. Yes, Ab it. absolutely, absolutely. Then that's the territory. That's the real thing. And somebody has what I consider is the most fundamental everything you make is an effort to understand the territory, whether it's the cosmos, it's the past, it's the village. It's always, unless we just let ourselves sink in our body and stand with our feet on the earth and really feel the connection, bare feet if possible, especially these villages where the floors of the very, very old buildings often are made with manure and river mud and, you know, they're living floors. And what I find very interesting about our talking now is in your Karachi and everybody assumes I'm in New York until they see where I'm sitting and they think, you know, well, What's that ceiling? Where could she possibly be in New York? And now I'm the one in a village, and you're in a town, and you're in a house that is so recent, and I'm in a barn that's stone, and the floors are wooden. So, you know, yes, I'm not standing on a mud floor, but this village is called Solberry in the state of Pennsylvania near the Delaware River. That's named after an English town. But we know because there are still very ancient tribal peoples living here, living here. So their springs, the water where they went to do their rituals, they still are doing those. And there are many, um, living places from the past, the particular barn that I'm in, that my daughter is an architect and my son-in-law is a master craftsperson and his crew, they renovated it for myself and my partner. But the floors are wooden, the walls in back of me are old growth. So this is echoing what I'm talking about by being in the territory if you're on the materials of the territory, like when you go to these villages and you eat the food of the place and you experience the people who've lived there and who can date back generations, then you tend to be able to talk about a different kind of curriculum. So that's my answer to your question about that's the kind of of ruminating, ruminating English is probably all your listeners know, because to my shame, they speak English, but I don't speak your language. Ruminating is what a cow does when they put the food they've taken into their mouth, but they put it over on the side and they chew it out before swallowing it. They have several stomachs. I have to look this up. But I like, I'm ruminating. That's how far I've gotten suggestion so the reason I ask is that you know we we talk about what um, we talk about the opportunity that we have. but this morning I had 
conversations with i believe is our custom right what we often talk about is the wiring of our recipient our our youth right we are for ourselves know doing this that somebody else take the baton forward you and i are gone it's not about leg- legacy creating it's about community continuing in my mind and i feel like when you recognize uh, that i take the, the master's course in columbia in 1993 it was a course a master's in education using new technology what we didn't discuss theory classes but we discussed at dalton in the mornings was how do we use the technology and this the, the tool and the content how do we merge so that the receiving understands it in their language now today 30 years later the way the brain is wired of a 15 to 25 year old is very different how my brain was wired as a 15 to 25 year and you and I spoke about we search we don't want to do research a lot of the people who are on uh, the editor community a lot of our viewers a lot of the participants who are with us live right now some will follow this story because of the scheduling right, for hours and some that will follow you they'll come back and watch our presentation video recorded most people are travelers people are either travelers within pakistan or there are many friends we have out of our community who are traveling from india from afghanistan from iran from other parts of the world from morocco from spain saudi arabia commonality is they're all travelers they're exploring of something they're documenting some of these places and i'm going to places because i want to discuss place with in terms of how are we going to find place for today's youth who in general does really not comfortable in large documents is not comfortable holding a strain of thought for too long they want things that are quick that results that are quick you know the capitalist world has created this mindset of instant gratification and and the fact that has been turned into this organ of pleasure there is no sense of a continuum or thought process or some struggle they want their answers out immediate results if you and i just of this morning struggled with that trying to communicate to a few young about how to manage and manipulate for their own benefit because their thinking it whiz past every just pick up what you pick up as you in past it as you breathe past it, pick up just the bare minimum of that experience i feel like what you and i are wanting to do is very heavy and diverse on how do we produce product for the recipient to accept the language by actually able to engage with us well very much something i've Now I'll say I've been musing and muse as you may all know our poetry and music and art and astronomy the muses are the goddesses of the Greek world of knowledge like you're mentioning so musing on it because I recognize completely the description giving of anyone 
who has been born to the digital world. And I know that the coding of most digital websites is to get you to react. So in other words, it's actually coded to raise the chemicals that make you want to push a button. In other words, you don't stop, you don't think. It's the pleasure chemical. It's the same thing that leads to alcoholism, drugs, overeating. So when this chemical is released, I feel it. Oh, I've got, you know, in fact, the first time I tried to get on with you, I was just clicking all over the place. You want satisfaction. <laughs> satisfaction is without a basis. It's the chemical response to like sugar, like artificial sugars. I gotta have more or artificial anything that stimulates chemically your body. So we have these neuro pathways, even myself, let alone somebody who grew up on them. And what I I hope that somebody will take offense because I'm full of all these very old ways of configuring a thought that come out of where I come from in the Midwest. And what comes to mind is, and what I say to myself when I am with my students, you can lead a horse to water. Yes. Make it drink. Yes. So I never, ever assume that anything I'm doing will get them to drink. So what I'm, what I'm engaging with is first, even if we're in the classroom, and I still do it online since all the courses or my, all my courses are now online, we do some kind of, at the beginning of when I talk to them digitally or when we get up and we do what I call stretching. And it's actually selected movements based on years of my practicing yoga. So I know what they're doing, what, you know, what's happening. I'm opening up their eyes from these horse blinders they've had on because they're looking at computers. Or I'm getting them to breathe because they're hunched over the computer. So I work with them not very long, but to the point that after a few classes, if I get too excited at the beginning of class and forget to do it, they'll say, oh, Gene, stop. We've got to get up. So we stretch, and then near the end, and this was what my assistants named this, stretch, then we roar. And we're bending over. Everyone gets up, and they do a line. The point of that is to get the theory of your body vibrating. And then we sit, yes, aligned so that you're at optimal uh, alertness. Yes, your spine straight, your chin parallel with the floor, your head, 40 pounds is not, ugh. no wonder we have back aches. Yes, yes. So we sit down, we meditate for a while, and then we begin. And that He's the body. If we can't go to the villages, if we can't go outside, we can go with whoever we're um, developing a curriculum for. We can go into our interior ecology. And that's the only living territory we know firsthand. Nobody else can tell us. If we make a map, then if you look at the map of my interior, the map is in I that you can gonna miss this. Whoops, you're gone. Oh, see, there you are, you're back again. Okay, 
So you go in your body. Hi. We go in your body and you're in a living territory. And that to me is the place that in the classroom, once the living territory is listened to, I, tr I try and, you know, there's the water. Like right now, I can't hear you. I can't hear, no, can't hear, nothing. I can see your face. Yeah, somebody else is saying sound. Uh, this is like, oh, Jean planned this so she can talk the whole time. <laughs> can you hear? Can you hear? No sound. No sound on my end, too, Benin? No sound on Jean? So something's happened to the sound. Sign out and start again. So, okay. Bye. Oh, we can hear you. They can hear me, but they can't hear you. Well, that helps. He, he can't hear me either. <laughs> okay. Try again. All right. I don't. Can't hear you. I don't know what the issue is. I'm literally like two minutes away from where I normally sit. No, it's not easy to do. Connecting, here I am. I can hear you. Can you yes, yes, yes. All right. This is much better. I can hear you loud and clear. It's much, much better. All right. So we were talking can about... All right. How's the sound, everyone? Good. Sound is, great. The sound is great. The picture is much so far so good. Uh, you're cutting out, but there's not the clicking. You're cutting out, but there's not the clicking. So That's we were talking about the territory for learning being your body. So even when we go, you go to your villages, my students go out into New York City neighborhoods their first ecology, their first territory is their body, inside their body. Beginning to learn how to tune it. If we're tuned in our body, then we can't tune in to place. You wanted to talk about place. Yes. That means how, how I start to get the, whoever I'm working with away from the reactive. Because to go into your body and listen, and that's what the stretching and the moving at the beginning of any conversation is about. You, when you're standing up and bending over and, you know, doing asanas simple well, you have to be in your body so you're in your body and that begins the awakening of what you're searching for that's why the word research in english you're searching for something you've lost it's not on something new you're searching with the connection to what i call a feeling tone which sep doesn't separate you and me like language does so the feeling tone in our body 
is before words, before concepts, before analysis. But to get there, to get to that territory, your first ecology, so you can connect out through the limits that you think separate you, but the elements, the basic elements of the universe, water, the oxygen, after the initial, whatever name you want to give to it, when the universe burst, whether it was Shiva waking up or the big blast, whatever tradition, that first, that first burst and the cooling down, water was formed and solidified, leading to material and air came much later. And the sun and the earth. In other words, what I'm trying to say is those primary elements are in our body. The air, the earth, the organic material, the water, and the energy coming from the sun. So once you get in touch with the movement of those through your body, and then you go out, then what I discover is the of the what is it that they're here to understand what is it and for so many years i was trying to remember when i started thinking about this we, in the in my lifetime we have open universe astrophysics what we know about the planets we've we've opened up understanding the dynamics of the earth and i don't mean conceptual standing under there are no words for it we don't i don't say that we can clamp a, a form onto this curiosity that in the last you know half century has so much more understanding and now it's collapsed at a moment when we need it there's a scientist in English, his name is Jer Diamond. And he wrote a book called Collapse. And what he did was look at isolated communities that have collapsed because they did not understand how to align through their basic earth, air, fire, water to the universe, like Easter Island. In other words, societies that just devastated their nests shit in their nest and then they collapsed too because they didn't understand it so the question has always been in my mind well understanding now we're collapsing and it's been going on for quite a while or he wouldn't have written the book so we have in our body even these digitized people that we you were talking about. We have a wish that we need to. So that's what I see as the reason that I'm here on this earth at this time, and I'm a my um, destiny is to be a teacher, and I'm thrilled that I am a teacher, and can I and the mystery of uh, this is this is what I'm here to talk about at Parsons three or four years ago I started a discussion about not accepting death as part of the reason for the collapsing that we now are fully in so that we modern societies have thought oh I can Ignore, I can my brain, all the things that are ridiculous. We can stop the uh, coronavirus. There'll be a virus. 
I mean, a virus. There'll be, <laughs> well, there'll be a vaccination that'll probably be another virus that goes wild. So I do think there are ways to accept the fact, and accept the fact that digital has been designed to co-opt our attention and go back to the body, to the territory, to what our organs know, what they bring us from the past, just like when you go to the villages and you bring people there for them to experience for themselves. You tell them, turn off your cameras, don't be mediated. So can we go into our body, into our, our original living uh, of it? It's a hologram of the universe at the same time that we're first in it. So we even have the geometry, the living geometry that was created so long ago and it has continued to evolve to help us communicate. Because this is the if we're communicating with different imprints on the and I don't mean to mystify, I just mean to recognize the limits of concepts and analyzing and words. Unless you go to the languages that are the sounds that wake up the body. So a long, a long discussion because we were having trouble with the sound, but um, the, the, the answer I'm musing about, musing again, the um, Greek mythology about how the different ways that we organize our thinking, our astronomy. There were five of them in the beginning. Apollo was the embodiment of music. So I'm musing. I'm not chewing like, like a cow, but I'm musing on the, on the ways we have organized our wisdom. So I, I think that um, we need to find new ways of organizing that way. Because um, when I take travelers with us to heritage sites, I'm very keen on understanding not only that place, but the movement that that come from and the struggle that I have, everybody. And even some of the, uh, our community who is here, who joined chats, even I've had some conversations with them where people want to just take a photo of what they see and then not think about it any further. Then they want to just post that someplace over here. They want to go, they want to leave their imprint of bringing back an imprint without really understanding the experience of that or the history that driven that is to be the is that thought photo worthy. So my fear is that how do we construct this self exoticism, which has become a really easy way to tour to be a tourist travel by self exotifying those different places without understanding place. Well, this is why I think first, and I don't know whether it's possible in the context of your edgy tours, but first to get people used to going their body and then going out. And that's, um, in one of my seminars this semester called Body and Mind in Nature and Design, when we all went online, we had synchronistically gotten 
they had done the body examination, the body understanding, going inside, beginning to realize that mind can run away with you, separate you from your body. But if you learn to still your mind, clear it, then the connect with vibration from outside your body. But your body has to be tuned to receive it. So we were at the point of going beyond that into their working, doing a design in a place where the earth, the living earth was. So all of a sudden school closes and the seminar students return to relatives, homes, if they live far away, uh, to their own home, and they're able to go outside and have much greater access to the living earth. So I had already had looking at a very interesting Scottish artist, Andy Goldsworthy, who is a harbinger of alignment with the dynamics of the universe, of the biosphere, which means the earth with the atmosphere, our realignment through the way we make. And of course, we all make, whether I choose a word or you draw or build, whatever we're doing, it's so the assignment the students have is to design with considerations of Andy Goldsworthy. And his most important consideration is, I have to align with these evolving dynamic earth, biosphere, universe, what I do when it, there's a word that's all over the design build world. We're going to intervene. So that just is what we've done, we've disrupted. And of course, they're all collapsing around us because we did disrupt them. We're not able to foresee all the consequences of how we make. So understanding when we, and this is what Andy for the shows his his late he has two videos that you can watch one of them is rivers and tides and it's about time that's a very early one i think it's 19 maybe 7 i forgotten but now he has a recent one 2018 40 years later in his work with the earth and it's called leaning into the wind first i think to see where he started and he started basically not with an expectation of controlling what he made in the future so there's according to the controlled way of acting and being, you have to clamp on to the future and make it the way you want. And if you don't succeed, you make plastics that will hold it forever. That's not Andy Goldsworthy. He built on the beach or on the river's edge in a winter dawn. It's snowing. He decided he was going out that day, but it starts to snow. You gotta go. And he starts piling up stone in this method called a cairn. And he gets the stones from the beach. And he starts piling them up, but oops, the stones aren't balancing, they fall down. So over the years, He's leaned into what is in terms of the dynamics of the earth, the biosphere, the universe. And he doesn't expect what he makes. 
to last forever. So there's the difference. Your intuition have to be aligned with this dynamic. And what you make lasts perhaps for a minute, a year, and then you no longer are in control. He's been ice and snow at dawn. And when the sun comes up, of course, it starts to melt the ice. Or he'll build somewhere and the wind comes stronger. The last one's called leaning into the wind. It's a struggle. So it's almost as if we're being recalled to what we know to survive. We don't need all a uh, capitalist consumer, plasticized, synthetic, toxic, fertilized, chemically engineered world. To survive, we have to go back to the wisdom in our body, and then we have to work that. And you learn by working that way. So that's my answer to you in terms of going to the sites. You know, maybe beforehand, there's more tuning of the body. So when they get there, they have a habit of starting. We have to have new habits to go into habitats, which are territory. Not to be, I mean, here, uh, it's just like now you're sitting in front of the wood in your house. The more living, the closer the material you have to your body, the more alive support you'll get. So here, ancient wood that used to be the roof of this barn from the 1700s that collapsed in a snowstorm. The materials I'm wearing are wool and cotton, hand embroidered, because they amplify and revive what you started the conversation noting, that we've dead ourselves through digital. So I think Jean, that, uh, that gives me plenty to think about because um, I think what I would really like to develop with you is to find content bridges and connect in elastic manner. Both of these things. I have ancient, soft, non ephemeral, extremely built, built and sat for millennia architecture. And then we have this side the, world, the universe, the internal wisdom, the connected earth to this that has to be revived and individual to individual to individual and a mass conscious movement through silence recreated and then approached with that new into the heritage which I, I think that if these dots are connected and then the whole thing is in a form that is easy to uh, swallow and ruminate on and process and analyze by the minds of today which are not through this sort of thought process who have not been given the skill set through our by education system that is global. It's an education system. It's education that Europe suffers with, Australia suffers with, Europe suffers with, and the US suffer with. These 15 year old to 25 year old, I think we can, this is what will happen in these short bouts of space and time collapse. That you and I are able to create this. We're collapsing space, we're collapsing distance with time zone, and creating a new real time um, life. I think if we can find a way of this architecture of the universe, Earth, and the world around us, ancient. Last night I watched many videos on the from the Egyptian, and it inspired me. I mean, they could 
have been aliens. But the kind of work, the kind of devotion that I, I could find in a new curriculum to imbibe in the generation of global leaders. And I feel like my attempt to heritage something is an intuitive in their treasure of information here for you. How to unpack it and repack it with what you're saying in terms of and an alignment of which when I have done it, the way that building has absorbed has been profoundly different to arriving at it like a full China shop. And I think this China kind of shop business, what we need to navigate through, because there is a plethora of material on Instagram, on Facebook, which is this what I keep the mindless exotification of these incredible sites across the world where you just go there, you take some away, and you've forgotten about it. of place. And I think it's like when I spoke about this whole idea of him moving. I think if we look at it, I look at this as being the home, that home, as you said, that we're born. Benin said there's a job that plays a role. You said there's an astrology from the day you're born and the city you're born. If we can take that home down, as you absolutely enlighten me about, and that idea of home and place, I think that creating a now is the time for us to do it, where these different facts come together and cater to a client who is to any of this. Because capital have, and technology has pushed into a direction where all of this is reduced to pleasure, in, I think, that's what we need to shift and disrupt. As I mentioned, I mean, it couldn't, I think the story you just unfolded about how to approach this is, is, is what's that? We're almost out of time, just to let you know. Okay, well, that, that's, that's where we should begin that's the, next, we, the next time. I, that's where we should conclude this. And hold on to the thought, you, me, and our viewers get involved in this conversation and contribute. I think that though today's chat is this is this is the beginning of the mission, I believe. Yes. And take it as time to arrive at it. But I think we need to also change our habits and reconstruct the thought process, this paradigm. So for today, I'm gonna Five o'clock before Instagram loosely connect. Thank you so much for being with us again. I will see you next Monday at the same time. Other down how this works. I hope that the connection will be better. I will sit in my room next to the wood, which is so beautiful. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And I will see you next time. Thank you so much, everyone, for series two. The office of Karachi. Thank you. Okay.